Hello and welcome. My name is Adrena. I am the owner and accountant here at Accounting by Adrena. We are a Los Angeles-based virtual bookkeeping firm, and I'm so excited that you're here. For today's video, I'm going to be discussing the differences between a sales receipt and a bank deposit. And I'm actually going to give some really specific advice if you are a nonprofit organization. It's actually advice coming from my own personal experience using QuickBooks Online. And I'm just going to tell you what I think is the best one to use for your best practice as an accounting firm if you are a nonprofit organization. So is it going to be a bank deposit or is it going to be a sales receipt? We don't know yet. I will tell you in this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up so the algorithm knows you're here, knows you're watching, and knows you enjoy these types of videos. And let's jump right in. So for this video, I am using the test drive version of QuickBooks Online, and we're going to use this $200 deposit as an example. So for the first example, I want to enter a sales receipt for that $200 deposit. And we're just going to be doing something completely random and just to get to $200. Okay, so I have entered three sales receipts, one for 100, one for 75, and one for 25. Now, when you come to the bank feed, then you can see the deposit of 200 on 513. So when you click on that, it opens up a new like kind of option that you can do. So you can click on match here. And then you can see those, okay, so there's supposed to be three that show up, right? But what's happening is, you know, QuickBooks likes to update things all the time. So it's suggesting some matches, which actually aren't, this doesn't relate to the ones that I just created. So if that ever happens to you, you can just turn that off. And then it's going to open up all of the open, you know, payments, deposits, things that haven't been matched in the bank feed. So just make sure you take a look at that first, because that kind of threw me off. I think that was a recent update as of like, I think last week or the past couple of weeks. Anyway, that was a sidebar, but you can see the three sales rece receipts here. So I would just click on all three of those. That equals 200. Um, the downloaded transaction from the bank was 200. And then you can match it quite easily just like that. And that is over and done with. Now, before we go to the bank deposit side, I want to make sure that you understand, you know, those transactions that I created by from those sales receipts were separate transactions. So those are going to show up here in the history. These are all three separate transactions with their own, you know, receipt number. When you go to the deposit though, and what we can do this one since it's not really showing up with another match. So when you open this up as received and you want to, let's just say, you know, you want to do a bank deposit. And, you know, you come up here, click on new, go to bank deposit. And then you would say checking 530. Actually, hold on. Let's get the information. So it's on 612, <laughs> 2024. All right. So when you're entering this bank deposit, it's going to all be connected. So it's $55 and these could be coming from several different people, individuals, companies, things like that. And you can just kind of select whatever you're looking for, 25. Just pretend I'm selecting different people because I, I really want to make this point here. So let's say maintenance, and then it was, I think it was 55 total. So 
essentially when you're doing the bank deposit for like one specific deposit, I know this kind of makes sense, in, like in the sense that you're like, if you were personally going to the bank to deposit like 10 checks that you received, you would fill out that slip that the bank has. And it's like, you know, the date and then list the number of checks, the amount, get the total. And that way the bank teller can look at that slip that they handed you to confirm the total of $55 on whatever date it is. And then that's how they have their own reconciliation. Now with this one, these are like in QuickBooks, this is all connected. And if I wanted to look at, if I want, if I needed to reclassify or change whatever account, I'd have to look at the whole bank deposit and who knows how many lines that becomes in order to find that one item that I needed to reclassify. But when you want to leave without saying yes. I mean, you can always, obviously like it's showing up as a deposit here. So you can just match it here on the bank screen if that's the way that you wanted to go. But my point here is if you are a nonprofit organization and you have multiple donors donating across multiple different, you know, check, cash, whatever it's going to be, I'm going to say... <laughs> that the sales receipt is going to be your best bet in order to get your donations entered into QuickBooks Online. I would actually say this is, in my opinion, this is the best practice for your nonprofit organization, just because each transaction is going to have its own identifier. And the thing with nonprofits, I will say, is they need to have complete transparency. And especially if they end up doing an annual audit, being able to go and identify exactly, you know, what you're looking for. See this deposit here, when you're looking at the history, shows up as only one item, but there could be two different contacts, you know, for however many checks were entered. But then on the sales receipt, you see them showed up showing up as their own specific transaction. I can see where, like, for example, a deposit would be a good idea is if you're doing cash and you don't need to classify the cash, let's say it's just, you know, donations from random people who gave a dollar here, two dollars there, five dollars here, like these low amounts, they don't want a tax receipt out of it. It's just an anonymous donation that they want to give to your nonprofit organization. I can totally see that using a bank deposit for that situation where that makes sense. So I just think that a bank deposit is, in my opinion, would only be good if you don't need a historical perspective. Now, I will say the drawback of using the sales receipt, if you are working with a, a QuickBooks accountant, the drawback with using the sales receipt is you cannot reclassify, you cannot use the reclassify tool as an accountant. If you're an accountant, you'll understand what I'm trying to say because it's a separate option that we have to reclassify a bunch of different transactions. So you would have to just go in one by one to reclassify it. Let's say it's not maintenance and repair and it was something else. Maybe it was just hours. Okay, then you'd have to make sure that you enter that in separately. Like you would just have to kind of redo that sales receipt. And especially if it's already matched, then it's gonna give you like an error. So let's see if it gives us the error here. Okay, <laughs> apparently this version of QuickBooks doesn't care. <laughs> but yeah, if it is matched or if it's reconciled, then it'll give a po little pop-up screen that says, you know, there's an error just in case you have the wrong amount or whatever it is that it wouldn't match to the, to the reconciliation that you did. So anyway, I kind of went through that last part a little bit fast, but if you're an accountant, I hope you tracked with me. If you have any questions on this video or like if you would like to discuss a little bit more the idea of a sales receipt versus a bank deposit, feel free to leave a comment down below in the description box and I will see you guys there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.